Hello students, today I am showing the dissection of the brain. Now here you can see that <coughs> this is the whole brain and you know that there are two cerebral hemispheres. So you can see that these are the two cerebral hemisphere and between the cerebral hemisphere we are having the median fissure. So you can see the median fissure. But if you will go deep into the median fissure, you can see that there is a corpus callosum and this corpus callosum is actually the white matter fibers which are connecting the both sides of cerebral hemisphere. Now this is your frontal pole of the brain, this is the temporal pole of the brain and this is the occipital pole of the brain. Now these are the cerebellum which are present in the posterior side and you can see that there is also a horizontal fissure between the occipital pole and the cerebellum. Now in this area you generally have a dural fold which is known as tentorium cerebelli and here you will have the dural fold is known as false cerebri. Now dear students when you will go in the downside you are able to see this area which is known as interpeduncular area. Now once you will have this whole brain in exam you first have the question how to identify the different sulci and gyri. So dear students now the first and important sulcus which you have to identify is the central sulcus. Now see this is known as superior medial border. Now if you will take the section of the brain you will realize that there is a only one sulcus which is actually making a cut on this whole border. So if I have to identify the central sulcus I have to look for the sulcus which is making a cut on this superior medial border. So for the better understanding I am taking the one half and this is the brain knife. So with the help of the brain knife, I am going exactly in the medial and when I am cutting this, you will have the two half of the brain. Now we have cut the two cerebral hemisphere. Now you can see that these are the two cerebral hemisphere. Now when I am trying to see on this surface, this is the medial side of the cerebral hemisphere. Now here you can see that this is the corpus callosum which is a very classical C shape structure and below the corpus callosum you can see this thin fold is known as septum pellucidum. Now deep to the septum pellucidum you will have the cavity which is known as lateral ventricles and these ventricles are present in the cerebral hemisphere. Now here you can see this is the cavity of a midline structure is known as third ventricle and this third ventricle is communicating with the lateral ventricle with a foramen and you can see this is the interventricular foramen of Monroe. Now this is the uh, your aqueduct of Sylvius which you can see here. Now this aqueduct of Sylvius is going downward and it is communicating with this uh, diamond shaped fourth ventricle. Behind that you can see the cerebellum and this cerebellum is showing the classical arbor vitae cerebelli appearance. Anteriorly you will have the brain stem. Now what are the brain stem parts you can see this is the midbrain, this is the pons and this is the medulla. Now we come to, uh, we will come back to our question that how to identify the central sulcus. So dear students if you will see this sulcus you can appreciate that this sulcus is making cut on this border. Now here you can see very clearly that there is a cut is present. Now this is the most important identifying feature that how to differentiate the central sulcus from the other sulcus. Because if you will remove this uh, meninges from the brain and if you will check the brain you will realize that there may be one or two more sulcus which are making cut on this border like this. Here you will have the cut but when you will trace this you will realize that it is very small sulcus and it is covered here. So you need a long sulcus and this long sulcus is making a clear cut cut on this border. So this is the central sulcus and in front of the central sulcus this is the frontal lobe and this gyrus is known as pre-central gyrus, this gyrus is known as post-central gyrus and this area which is a u-shaped area around the central sulcus is known as paracentral lobule and the question comes from the paracentral lobule is that it is the highest center of your urination and defecation and anteriorly you will have the motor area for the control and posteriorly you will have the sensory area of the same reason. So this is the paracentral lobule which is seen on the medial side but the most important thing is that how to identify the central sulcus by this cut. Now when you will trace the central sulcus it is going downward and this is your horizontally placed lateral sulcus. Now this lateral sulcus starts from the base of the brain. So this is the base where you will have the anterior perforating substances. Now what do you mean by the anterior perforating substances? This area is actually having the multiple small vessels and these vessels are going deep into the brain to supply the blood. And that area if you are able to see here there are multiple small foramina they are known as anterior perforating substances. 
So sometimes you have this question in Viva that what is the purpose of these perforating substances? Answer is that these perforating substance for the uh, in entry of the minute blood vessels deep into the brain. Now from this point, we are having the sulcus and this is the horizontally placed sulcus. This is known as lateral sulcus. So this lateral sulcus will go and it will come here and it is having the three part. This is the posterior ramus. Then it is having the anterior ascending and anterior horizontal arm. Now this is the temporal lobe. It, if I will separate the temporal lobe from this lower part of the frontal sulcus, deep to that you are able to see that there are the blood vessels are present. Now these are actually the branches of middle cerebral artery which you can appreciate here. So this is the middle cerebral artery branches which I am just removing from this area which is actually the part of lateral sulcus. Now deep to that you are able to see the sulci and gyri and this is known as fifth lobe of the brain or it is known as hidden brain or it is known as insula or Riedel's lobe or the fifth lobe. Now here you also able to see the sulci and gyri. So these are known as gyrus rectus and you will have this hidden area or you can say the uh, fifth lobe of the brain which is present deep into the lateral part of this sulcus. Now students you have to understand this thing that it is very difficult to find out the line of demarcation between the parietal lobe and occipital lobe. So for that what we will do is that here you are able to see a notch. So we will make a one line from this notch and this notch is providing your uh, this one vertical line and behind this vertical line you will have the occipital lobe in front of that you will have the parietal lobe and anterior boundary of parietal lobe is marketed by this central sulcus. So this is the post central gyrus which is a sensory cortex and you will have the lobules in the parietal lobe which are having the secondary sensory association areas. Now when you will go posteriorly on the tip you will have the occipital area which is present here in the occipital lobe. Now when you will have the temporal lobe on the superior surface of the temporal lobe you will have the temporal gyri where you will have the auditory areas. So these are the main important areas and the another important thing is that if you will see the left cerebral hemisphere you will have the question that where is the location of Broca's area. So again you have to first remove all these frontal sulci and gyri and once you will remove this you are able to see that this is a area where you will have the Broca's area in the frontal lobe. So this is the Broca's area which is present in the left cerebral hemisphere in the part of the inferior frontal gyrus. So this area is known as the motor speech area or the Broca's area. So this is, these are the some very important things which you have to know about the sulci and gyri. Now on the medial side if you will have the question related to the corpus callosum. So what are the parts of corpus callosum? So now the first important thing which is visible here is this cerebral artery. Now this is the anterior cerebral artery. You can see that this anterior cerebral artery is making a loop along with this C, C curvature of the corpus callosum. Here you can very well appreciate this anterior cerebral artery loop. So this loop is actually taking the course along with this corpus callosum. Now what are the parts of corpus callosum? This is known as splenium. Then you will have this body. This is the genu and this is the rostrum. Clear? And here you can see this is the septum pellucidum and this septum pellucidum is separating this uh, both side of the lateral ventricular cavity because it is a midline structure. Now here you can see this, this is the area which is known as interthalamic adhesion. This is the interthalamic adhesion because this is the thalamus and below the thalamus you will have the hypothalamus. So there is a hypothalamic sulcus. Now this hypothalamic sulcus starts from this foramen of Munro and it is directed towards the aqueduct of Sylvius. So if you will draw a line, this line is dividing this diencephalon into the two part. Upper part is known as thalamus, lower part is known as hypothalamus. In this lower part, you also able to see the mammillary body which is visible here. And here you are able to see this is the area which is providing the suspension for the pituitary gland. Above that anteriorly you will have this cut section of the optic chiasma and anteriorly you will have this small plate and that is known as lamina terminalis. This lamina terminalis define the anterior neuropore position. So this is the again question of your viva that where is the anterior neuropore represented in the brain? Answer is this anterior wall of the lateral ventricle which is known as lamina terminalis. So these are the some very important features which you should identify in this area. Now apart from that you will have this area is known as supracallosal sulcus 
above the supra callosal sulcus you will have this gyrus is known as cingulate gyrus and above the cingulate gyrus you will have the cingulate sulcus now this cingulate gyrus is actually the part of the papus circuit which is responsible for the con uh, conversion of your recent memory and uh, convert it into the recent to the long term memory clear so these are the some important features which you should always keep in mind when we are reading the cerebrum thank you